Any plans on going to Korea? Do you ever plan on living abroad? What's your MBTI and Enneagram? How do you know when it's time to let go of a friendship? Good morning. Before we move on to the rest of the vlog, I want to give a quick shout out to Belief for sponsoring this portion of the video. I'm sure you're very familiar with Belief by now. They have some of the most hydrating skincare products. Right now is honestly the perfect time to try out anything from their lineup because their holiday kits are out. This one is the Glow on the Go Holiday Travel Kit and it includes five deluxe samples for an entire skincare regimen. Some of my favorite products from this kit is probably the Aqua Bomb Jelly Cleanser and the True Cream Aqua Bomb, which I actually also have in the full-size version. It's one of their best-selling products and it's super lightweight but it still provides so much hydration and the cleanser is actually formulated with the same properties as the true cream so it's equally as hydrating it has amino acids and glycerin based cleansing agents that gently removes makeup without stripping your skin but honestly everything in this kit just works so well together like the aqua bomb hydrating toner is a water-based toner with honeysuckle to soothe and calm the skin the true cream aqua bomb sunscreen has spf 50 and it's born from the dna of the true cream aqua bomb so it both protects and hydrates your skin also look how cute this sample size is and last but not least the moisturizing eye balm provides a 26 hour burst of hydration and and wears well under makeup. PSA for those who didn't know, the Sephora VIB sale is going on. If you're a VIB Rouge member, it actually started today and you can get up to 20% off, belief included. For VIB members, the sale starts November 1st and you can get up to 15% off. And for all beauty insiders, the sale starts November 3rd and you can get up to 10% off. And I will say having these travel kits comes in handy, especially if you have a holiday travel plans coming up. This just has everything that you need. I'll make sure to put all of the links to the products that I mentioned in the description so make sure you check that out. I just ran a couple errands in the city and now I'm gonna grab a quick bite to eat at Yubu. Fall in New York is truly something else. A little tip if you're shopping in Soho and you need to use the bathroom, the real real has the bathroom downstairs. <laughs> Met up with Lois. Hello. We're both going to the Love Bonito female founders event tonight. But yeah, we're gonna look for a birthday gift and then head over to the event. This smells good. We I gotta like that one. We gotta smell them all. This is very holiday. -y. This is smoky, so this in French means spark. I posted on Instagram that I would be answering some questions in my next video and we are just gonna do that right now. Let me get out of the shirt that I slept in and I will be right back. All right, we're gonna get comfortable because I have a feeling it's gonna be kind of long. First question, what's your MBTI and Enneagram? So I recently took it and it came out as ENFP. As for the Enneagram, I've pretty much been consistently a type nine. Sometimes I'll get type seven. How do you view friendships in your late 20s? I think in the past, I was so willing to just like give, 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 and I didn't really think about myself. And I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but I think I've learned to be a little more selfish sometimes in friendships. And I would like to think that my closest friend would be happy for me that I've had this kind of shift in mindset and that I'm not so much of a pushover anymore. I got a lot of questions about June and I mean, I guess I could answer 
this one at least what made you choose june how did you know he was the one to put it simply i always dated with the intent to marry and so if i'm being completely honest i think me saying like oh i can see myself marrying them like it didn't carry that much weight and i also think that's because i was kind of immature in the sense where i didn't think about everything that comes with marriage right but i think june is the first person where i can say that he is someone that i want to build a life with and a family with and i couldn't say that confidently in the past nor did i even think about it with him i think about very specific things in my future that i want to experience with him you know and i mean maybe that comes with just like age maybe i'm just thinking more about kids and growing old but i think that's kind of why people say like right person right time like if i met him back in high school or in college or even right when i moved to new york would we still have dated and honestly probably not and even if we did i don't think it would have worked out just because of where i was at in my life and you know where he was at in his life any plans on going to korea do you ever plan on living abroad i know this is supposed to be a very light question for me it's a little bit harder to answer that i've always been pretty open about my status i don't think it's something that i need to be ashamed of i mean for those who didn't know like i am under daca which is deferred action for childhood arrivals and, and one of the conditions for that is like i can't leave this country but in exchange i can get a legal working permit social security and so things like traveling abroad and moving abroad i just kind of crossed off do you feel like you're late to everything in life i'm 24 and i feel like i'm too old i don't know if you're asking in the context of career or dating marriage i'm 28 and i still feel like i'm not too old so no i don't think you're too old at all i think every year you're gonna feel like oh i'm too old next year you're probably gonna be like oh i wish i started at 24 i know it's very easy to look at your life and compare it to someone else's and where they are but i just told myself that that's a very counterproductive way to live focusing on where other people are at is just a waste of my time because there are so many things that i want to do still i know it's a lot easier said than done to not get to discouraged especially with social media and even just like watching youtube if it's any consolation i just left my corporate job five months ago i still don't know what i'm doing with my life but i do know what i want and i am working towards getting there just hang in there we're all just trying to live out here you know so lots of friendship questions today someone asked how do you know when it's time to let go of a friendship for me personally i know when we no longer have the same values i think that kind of shakes the foundation of our friendship because once that's compromised then there's no longer trust and then sometimes respect even falls through it's hard to have a deep friendship with someone when those things aren't there that's kind of when i'll know it's time to let go but i think that's different for every person like if this is someone that you still want in your life and you're okay with not having a very deep friendship with them then like you know you don't have to fully let them go how do you handle stress i tend to act a lot more outwardly meaning i'll find people to talk to i'll go do some sort of activity i'll maybe work out and i do that first to kind of get me in a different headspace than where i was at before i was told that looking for distractions is an unhealthy way of coping i mean it's unhealthy if you continue to only look for distractions right and you never deal with it i think it's okay to look for distractions if that's going to get you in the right headspace to eventually deal with it i think that's kind of the shift that i've had because in the past i used to just constantly distract myself and i never really dealt with the problem but now i'm very aware of what i'm doing i'm looking for a distraction because i just need to clear my head for a bit and then we're gonna address this when we get back and the reason i do that is because when i used to just address things head on while i was already in this very negative space i found myself spiraling a lot more and i told myself a lot of things that i probably wouldn't if i was kind of in a different headspace i needed to kind of like shake the feelings off first and then address things a little bit more logically but like i'm not a professional nor have i had any like professional help so i don't really know if that's healthy so don't like take my word for it but it's what's been working for me for now so 
Okay, so I'm just gonna address the elephant in the room. Are you and Michelle still friends? So I've put a lot of thought into this. What I was initially planning on doing was avoiding the question and just letting time kind of let it fade away. But the reason I changed my mind is because this is the second time now where in my comment section, you guys have had a discussion amongst yourselves about, you know, just assumptions and stories. And there was just a lot of negativity in the comments that I wanted to address. So, sure. <sighs> short answer is no, we're not friends. I mean, I think you guys kind of already knew that. Uh, as for the why and what happened, that's not something that I am ever going to share. I don't feel comfortable talking about someone else that you guys clearly know who I'm talking about. So I hope you guys can just wish both of us the best on our separate paths. And this is the most that I'm willing to speak on this hopefully ever again. So yeah, thank you guys for understanding. Well, that's it for today's video. I don't mean to end it so abruptly like this, but thanks for hearing me out and as always for all your guys' support. I'll see you guys in next week's video. Mm -hmm.